set, just how would you evaluate the offense performance against Vanderbilt and what needs to change, get better, or stay the same as you get into A&M and m and that defense you're going up against? Uh, I think we took some steps uh, in the right direction. We just have to finish off drives, and that means just playing smart football, as Coach Beamer talks about, and, and taking care of the ball. Uh, you know, we get down there inside the 10, we fumble. Uh, we have an explosive inside the 10. We get a call back for a holding. Uh, so all those little things, just from a, a ball security and fundamental technique standpoint, has to continue to improve. But I thought we did some really good things. Uh, Zeb Noland is going to be the starter moving forward. Just uh, what is your confidence level in him, and what do you uh, want to see out of him this weekend? Uh, I have 100% confidence in Zeb. I think he has a great understanding of uh, not just our offense, but the game of football, how to play quarterback, how he knows uh, what his – uh, strengths and weaknesses are, and I think he knows how to utilize those and protect the team, protect the ball, and, and allow us to be productive uh, based on those. So I'm excited to see what he can do. It's good, uh, going to be good to get him back out there and get going. I thought he got off to a good start, how he ended the other night. And hopefully that, that positive energy will, will carry through this week. The, the fourth down with the throw to Xavier, I guess so he kind of motioned a little bit, and y'all screened it to him. What, what do you see there? What are you trying to create there? When, uh, when you're, I guess, uh, we were anticipating man coverage, and uh, it, it's a play built for man and zone. And uh, we put it in like two weeks ago. I uh, just need to keep working on it a little bit more. But uh, their, their guy came up, made a good play, you know. But it was, it was, um, Xavier did what he was supposed to do, it just didn't work. Marcus, as far as you know, quarterback play goes, I mean, obviously you've been balancing Luke, keeping him healthy and getting him back, and now obviously he's done for the season. You got Zeb. I mean, how, how much, if at all, does that change the complexion of knowing that, hey, Zeb's our guy going forward, we move with that, versus you know, trying to keep Luke's foot in check and you know, keep him healthy? And I guess how does, if at all, does that change things? You know, when you got a healthy quarterback and you can kind of move forward from there? Yeah, I think it changes a little bit. I mean, you know, you always had to keep the offense going in a certain direction, a quarterback run friendly uh, environment whenever you knew that, that Luke was going to be there. And when he came back and you were trying to take care of his foot with the amount of stuff you asked him to do with his feet, uh, you know, Zeb's not a, not a, we give him a hard time. He's, he had the long run of one on the opening play against Georgia, uh, <laughs> but he can move well enough to protect himself. But, you know, it's going to be less uh, working in practice on, on quarterback runs and just working on just finding ways to, uh, let Zeb utilize his athletic ability, whether it be throwing the ball or just extending a play. Let's go to Corey Diaz in the back left. Marcus, the, obviously Zeb started the first two games. Were there things that you guys did with, with him under center versus what you've gone, done the last four weeks with Luke? Are there things that you kind of maybe gone away from that we might be able to see you guys maybe call those different types of plays or schemes or formations now that Zeb's back under center? Uh, I can see that. I mean, there was a couple uh, more things I w that we did early in the first two games under center uh, that, you know, are definitely back in play more now. Uh, we were more gun oriented with Luke. But, uh, you know, again, it's just we have to call plays that allow our, our offense to have success. And with Luke, that could be with his feet as well as with his arm. And with Zeb, it's got to be with his mind, his, his uh, maturity, his. Uh, you know, all the reps that he's gotten at this position and, uh, you know, maybe less with his feet, but more with just him just being savvy. John Little, back right. Is there anything different about Zeb since uh, last time uh, folks saw him, I guess, first drive against Georgia? Is, is he, how, how's he grown as a player in comfort with the offense or, or anything along those lines? I think more so just anything. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's a team. He's always been a good teammate, but I think he feels more part of the team. Like he feels less coach, more player now than early on. It was still, you know, figuring out how to get in that locker room and be a teammate as opposed to a coach. And I think now he's, you know, they, he's he was always accepted. I think him himself feels more comfortable in the locker room. I think he feels more part of the team. Uh, you know, just from a football standpoint, I think he's just gotten better each week. His hands healed up. Uh, he knows the offense even more. He's gotten more reps at it. So I anticipate him going out and having to, having a good game on Saturday. But just, uh, you know, again, just his maturity and all the reps he's gotten at the position is going to going to help him throughout the rest of the season. Let's go Pete, middle left. Marcus, how have uh, Jason and Colton reacted knowing that if Zeb gets hurt, you know, that they're the next ones up? Uh, Jason, again, like I have no issue when JB goes in the game. I think from where he – he wasn't ever, I wasn't ever disappointed with him, but like where he's come from in the spring to where he is now is light years. Uh, just from communication, just the comfort, just 
the comfort with the offense and what we're asking him to do. He had a really good practice today. So he trots out there. I have no issue whatsoever. And I think he knows that. And uh, he just keeps getting better and better. And he knows that, you know, based on the data of this season, there's probably a chance he's going to have to go in and play some, some plays, games, snaps, whatever it is moving forward. So I think, you know, he's just staying ready for when his time comes. And, uh, you know, Colton as well, just making sure he's not just a scout team quarterback this week. He's make, we're making sure he's coming to get in, uh, you know, a handful of reps each day just to make sure that, uh, you know, if something crazy happened, he'd be ready to go at a moment's notice. Mark, as you mentioned, as coaches, you know, trying to do everything you can to put the, your players in the best positions to be able to succeed with implementing that NFL style offense. What have you changed maybe over the last couple of weeks to be able to cater maybe to some of the strengths of this offense now that you know some of the strengths and weaknesses of your players? Uh, I think we've, you know, just from a uh, at the line of scrimmage with our quarterbacks, I think we've helped them out a lot more over the last couple of weeks. I uh, implemented some of the stuff I'm sure you see just looking to the sideline, making sure we're getting in good plays. Uh, I would say that would be the major thing, even though that's not something we do a lot. Uh, we didn't do it at all going into the season. And so that with some just some little communication things with the snap count, and how we get to play called and stuff, dealing with uh, crowd noise. I think we've, we've really went less away from the NFL game and more into the college game. A couple weeks ago, you expressed wanting to get Jaheim more involved, and obviously he, he has been. What, what have you seen from him as he's sort of taken on more of a – uh, workload. I mean, he's special. You can see it, you know, just when he touches the ball anytime, he's different than anybody on the field. And just his size, athletic ability, his ball skills, his vision as a runner, his balance, his, his everything. He's just a, such a, a great athlete, great football player. So, I mean, we've just made a conscientious effort that, you know, it's we're not going to come out of a game with him touching the ball three times. Like, he has to touch the ball. And when he does touch the ball, whether it's blocked right or not, he usually at least gets a yard. And so, we just have to keep finding ways and be creative, getting him the ball, getting the ball in space, whether it be running the ball, direct handoffs, jet sweeps, passes, whatever it is. He just he has to touch the ball in order for us to have some success on offense. So how far do you think the run games come over the past three weeks or so? Uh, I mean, all I see is the negative in it. So, you know, I know it's getting better just because of how we're attacking you know, we're, we're trying to attack the edges probably a little bit more than we were early on and uh, just, you know, making sure that we're getting the running backs in the right plays that they fit. I think it's just naturally it's going to get better the more you practice and the more you play and the more you're in the system. So I think it's just it's uh, it, it's heading, it's trending in the right direction. Still, it's never going to be where we want it, but we are getting better. You mentioned obviously not going to run Zeb as much as maybe you ran Luke, but how different will this offense look compared to when Zeb was out there before because you know some of the personnel groupings and how you want to run things more so than you did the first two weeks of the season? Um, it's going to look very similar. Uh, just, again, just focusing on making sure we don't come out of a game saying uh, that Juju touched the ball once and Zeb and uh, Jaheim touched the ball twice. Like, we just can't do that, you know, like we did against Georgia. We're – Juju didn't get any touches. So, I mean, we're just, you know, we, we know that Zeb knows that and we can program Zeb to make sure the ball goes where it needs to go. Zeb, so just to clarify, when Zeb got hurt, when did he actually get back to throwing a football and, and getting full go and going again? Uh, he was going less than 10 days. He was throwing, they had this glove they had like rigged together for him just in case of an emergency. And he was, he was throwing it pretty good uh, with that glove on. But, uh, it was less than 10 days. I couldn't give you an exact number, but he came back relatively a lot uh, sooner than I thought he would. And kind of with that, just how much balance, I mean, how much did he get in terms of reps, you know, from time he gets back to now? And I guess how much does that change if at all? Uh, he, he would get, I mean, I'm going to make up a percentage. This is not, I would say 40% of the reps throughout the week with the ones. And, you know, we always kept him involved, just knowing that that foot with Luke could, could uh, cause an issue at any time. I uh, know Juju last week, and, and Shane said that your other three running backs were a little bit banged up coming out of that game. Do you expect to have all four guys available, and you know how how comfortable are you with, with all those guys from, from an injury standpoint? Uh, I mean, we're anticipating having all four of them. They're still a little banged up. You know, they were all out there, all four practice today. Uh, you know, like Coach just said, I mean, this is – this is, you know, you're over halfway point in the SEC. Everybody's banged up right now, especially that position. I mean, they get it's a, it's a very physical position. So uh, nobody's 100%, but they were at least out there. They were trying to practice today and uh, trying to make sure that they get on that plan.
plane to get to Texas. So kind of like what you mentioned, you know, avoiding like the Georgia week whenever Juju didn't get the ball and, and stuff like that. I wanted to know, you know, who makes those final personnel grouping decisions? Is it you? Is it Shane? And what goes into deciding who gets the plays, who goes out, stuff like that? Uh, it, me, ultimately. Uh, and then Coach, you know, I would never go in there and demand something. If, if Coach Beamer comes in and says, I want this, then that's what's going to happen. Uh, but it ultimately falls on me. And then our assistants, we just sit around and, you know, like, Coach Kimry will say, uh, this is a good play for, you know, TK, Trey King. All right, well, this will be this personnel with his, you know, something tag, whether it's hometown or whatever. And, you know, uh, Step may say, hey, that's a great play right there for Josh Van. And we'll, you know, we'll tag it that way. So everybody has input. It's just, you know, who we think can maximize the play based on their skill set. When you're under center, does that allow you guys to attack the edges with the running game a little easier? Like, then opposed to being the shotgun, is it, can can you get to what you want to do from under center? I think, yeah, I think so. Just because you're so like, there's no tell signs. Like when you're in the gun, the back's going to be one side or the other. And when you're in the pistol, like defenses have, they've done a really nice job of, you know, they can tell based on where the tight end is, uh, the depth of the back. So at least when you're under center, it's all balanced up for the most part. Uh, you can you can get on the edges, uh, you know, with some run checks uh, that Zeb's good with. So. Uh, in my opinion, yes, I think you can get to the edges, attack the edges from under center by doing some unique things. Uh, I don't know if more so from the gun, but I think with what we have, we we can. We can. With Zeb back at quarterback now, and you hope for the rest of the season healthy, the long haul, does it change your play calling philosophy with more shots down the field, more deeper balls, because that seemed like something he could do well in those first two games? Yeah, I mean, you think about his, uh, you know, the last game against Georgia, he completes the third down throw to Josh Van down the sideline. So uh, he's got really nice touch. And again, just the amount of time, amount of snaps he's taken. And you have to, you have to utilize the, the play action game with him because he's not a runner. So, uh, you know, Coach Beamer's on me all the time, like sat, take this many shots each quarter. You know, he's always pushing, pushing, making sure that we're attacking downfield. And that's one thing that Zeb's really good at. And, uh, you know, hopefully that you'll start to see uh, some of those that he was doing earlier in the season with Josh and those guys show up some more. Marcus, unless you guys were 7-0 and right now, scoring 80 points a game, you knew critics were going to be out there. How are you handling that? Do you, hand, do you pay any attention to the outside noise? Uh, I, I would love to say I don't listen to anything. I mean, Obviously, you know, your family is the one that has to deal with it. I can come in here and hide and not, you know, I'm, I don't have any social media right now. I have no clue what's going on in the world. But my daughter, my wife, you know, the families are the ones that have to deal with that, which stinks. But I knew as soon as you come into a, a organization or program like South Carolina, that's why you do this. Like, I'm a fan. Like, I, I rip coaches all the time of teams that I'm for. So I get it. You know, it's, it's part of the job. Uh, that's the, the special place about South Carolina. You have as many people that care that much about it. Like what stinks is whenever you're coaching somewhere and people don't even know if you're losing or winning and they don't show up to the game and they don't care. So I'd much rather have it like this, knowing that the end result, like I know where this thing's going. I know how this thing ends, ends up. And I know that eventually, you know, there'll be some joy with uh, the madness, but I totally understand it. Like not personal. It's, it's a game. That's why it's fan. It's fanatic fans. Uh, so, it comes along with the gig, but hopefully we can start to, you know, trend the other direction sooner rather than later. So a and M's defense is really good at generating pressure with a not immobile quarterback, but a guy that's not as mobile as maybe Lucas. How do you scheme around that and try to keep him upright, um, which has kind of been a problem earlier in the season? Uh, Ze keeping Zeb upright. Uh, I mean, Texas a and they're really good defensively, and, and they're a lot like Kentucky. They've got uh, nine returning starters, I believe, and they've got a lot of super seniors and juniors that have played a lot of football. Uh, they got a great scheme. Uh, you know, Elko, Mike's going to do, Coach Elko's going to do, uh, he's going to try to take away the couple things that we do really well. So, you know, we've got to be ready for that, be ready for him to combat that and be able to have an answer ourselves and not just be out there, go out there blind and say, well, we can't do A, B, and C. I guess we're screwed. So, uh, you know, we've got to be creative to make sure that, that we're not letting our O-line have five one-on-one -on -one blocks each play on third down. We've got to make sure they're getting help, make sure our tackles are getting help. And, again, getting the ball early out of his hands so he can get some completions, get some confidence and – then just let the game kind of go and see see how it ends up and get let him get in rhythm. Last 
Marcus, I know maybe two weeks ago or so you mentioned, you know, uh, White was able to at least get on the field with special teams. Was there anything in practice these last couple of weeks that he wasn't doing that maybe was holding him back, or was it just the guys in front of him were just performing that well to earn those touches during the games? Yeah, it was the, I mean, the guys in front of him were performing and they were practicing well. And it wasn't that Z was just out there, you know, looking like garbage. That was not it at all. And he was practicing, like, he brings the most energy to the team. And that's what, you know, Coach Beamer came to me a week ago and was like, hey, you know, Z's a leader on this team. He brings positive energy to the offense, to the defense. I mean, and he's, you, we know he can be super productive. Let's find some personnel groupings for him. And, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but he was playing some wide receiver, doing some motions and stuff. And then those guys get banged up, and then he gets to go back and play tailback. And at halftime, Beams was just like, hey, I don't care what we do. Just the first two or three touches of the second half, let's get him the ball and see what happens. And then, you know, he broke that thing open, had a good run, got him on the perimeter with a little screen. Uh, hit another third down on the screen. So, I mean, he was very instrumental in just the energy of our team offensively and defensively of, of making an, a run, you know, in the Vanderbilt game and ultimately having a chance to win it. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you, guys.